mm, mm. I can't afford for my hair to be falling out the next day because people put in voodoo on me. <laughs> and let's repeat that again. This black girl has a lot of hair. People tend to think that black girls can't have long hair. you guys it's your girl Dale welcome or welcome back to my channel so in today's video as you guys can see from that title we're gonna be talking about things that I have avoided during my natural hair journey this video was long overdue but we're getting to it today because I got a couple of things that I want to talk about you know I feel like some of the things that I'm gonna hit on today are like natural hair myths and I just feel like it's very important that I share with you guys things that I haven't done because honestly it's so easy to hop on trends especially if you're starting a natural hair journey and like i can testify to that because i feel like i've tried a couple of things but there are certain things that just rub me the wrong way without further ado if you guys are new to my channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button turn that post bell notifications to get notified every single time i upload a video follow me on my main social media account at hair say it is always on the screen and the link is always in that description box and let's hop right into it so the number one thing that I avoided during my natural hair journey is definitely wearing wigs for growth. Now this, I have like nothing against people that wear wigs and lace fronts and all that stuff. But for me, I like strayed away from that. And I'm going to tell you guys why. I strayed away from wearing wigs because one, I feel like it didn't look good on me. And two, I think it does more damage than growth. Like I think there's so many pros and cons when it comes to wigs and... A lot of people always ask like do wigs grow your hair do they prevent hair growth like what really happens pertaining to wigs and i think for me like wigs do grow your hair but if your hair underneath the wig isn't properly taken care of then it really promotes excessive damage and excessive hair loss that shouldn't be happening on a regular day basis i think that people that wear wigs sometimes they forget that their natural hair is under the wig so they're not really taking care of their natural hair or protecting it as they should because they're probably thinking like, oh yeah, I'm just about to slap this wig on my head so I don't really need to aid to my hair. And I think that's where people really go wrong. Also, another thing when it comes to wigs, I think that people literally look forward to wearing a wig because they think that it helps them not do any sort of tight styling to their hair or maybe avoid any sort of damage and with that being said like i said in the beginning i think when it comes to like closures because i remember getting a closure one time and i think i got it in high school and honestly that thing was so tight i really i didn't like it. it like i just don't like wigs i really it's not my type of tea but i feel like if you're wearing like closures and all these tight hairstyles and lace fronts excessively and every week you're not really aiding to your hair it will definitely promote some sort of damage to your scalp to your strands that are really unnecessary moving forward of course you guys know i got my notes on my phone the next thing that i've definitely avoided during my natural hair journey is like trimming my hair every three months i think that's like a whole thing now people have a certain day or a certain month that they would trim their hair and when it comes to that i don't really have a certain month a certain day that i would trim my hair i would just trim my hair or dust my ends when it's needed and that has definitely worked for me like in my whole hair care regimen because i know i've met certain people where they would say like oh i trim my hair every six months or oh i trim my hair every time i get a curly cut or i trim my hair every time i blow it out and for me i would say i would typically trim my hair maybe twice a year and those two times that i trim my hair are when i blow out my hair so that's basically it. Or sometimes I would dust my ends when my hair is curly. If I have any single stranded knots, I would clip those off because it's better to cut them off than to pull them because that leads to more breakage. I mean, like, hello. So yeah, that's honestly something that I have avoided during my natural hair journey, having a timestamp on when I would do things. Like I never had a timestamp on when I would like do a mass treatment. When I say mass treatment, I'm not talking about like a deep conditioning. I mean like you know, doing like a mayo egg or like a protein treatment. I never had a timestamp on doing things like that. It was just like, okay, I'm gonna do this because I would feel when my hair needs it. 
Like my hair is not gonna need to trim every three months. It's not gonna need to trim every six months. It's not gonna need to trim in the next week. That's something that I've never really followed or never really put a timestamp on. The third thing that I've definitely avoided during my natural hair journey is washing my hair often. Like, oh yeah, I wash my hair every week or I wash my hair every two weeks. That's something, that's another thing. I never had a timestamp on that. If my hair felt dirty, if my scalp felt itchy, then that's when I would wash my hair. But I never said like, yeah, I wash my hair every two weeks or I wash my hair every Friday or I co-wash my hair every Wednesday. Like, timestamps on things were never something that I had growing up or washing my hair because my hair has always been natural i've always been natural all my life when my mom used to wash my hair she never said oh my god it's time for you to wash my hair like it's just i don't know it's when my hair felt dirty or when she knew that okay it's time like you know you need to wash your hair so that's another thing but as of right now i would say this year starting off i would say that I've washed my hair more frequently than I would before and I think that's because I started getting more serious with my content creating on Instagram so that kind of caused me to wash my hair more than I should but honestly I really don't have a time stamp on anything and I wouldn't say that I wash my hair every two weeks because now recently my scalp is a little bit itchy some days and I'm not really too sure why maybe I have like product buildup or um, my hair really needs to be clarified so I'm actually looking forward to doing like a clarifying mask on my hair because I need it. Like I just feel when my hair is dirty. I feel when it needs refreshment. I feel when it needs a moisturizer. I feel when it's lacking in something. I just know. And then when I do it, I'm like, okay, that's what I needed. But what I don't say is like, oh, I do a DIY treatment on every Friday. Or I do a DIY treatment every two weeks. Like timestamps on things are again not something that I followed by while being natural and also when it comes to washing your hair I think especially with your hair texture or your hair type I know certain people that would wash their hair every week because they're saying like oh I know people who would wash their hair every week uh, sometimes they'll say like I wash my hair every week because I go to the gym like five days a week and I don't want no sweaty smell you know staying on my hair and stuff like that and with that I can understand um or sometimes in general like people just say i wash my hair every week because i feel like my hair needs to be washed every week and it's honestly your personal preference for me i don't wash my hair every week i don't wash my hair every two weeks i wash my hair when i feel like i need to so that's just that now the fourth thing that i've definitely avoided during my natural hair journey is having more than a handful of products when i first started my natural hair journey i really did not have a lot of products like I, how I have now because I'm trying to get rid of the products that I have now. I have too many products. I literally branched out to so many different companies and it's just crazy. My stash is just getting overflowed. I can't buy any more products unless I finish what I have now. Um, but yeah, I've definitely never had a handful amount of products when I first began my natural hair journey. I think I only stuck with Carol's Daughter and Aussie Moist. But I first started off with Carol's Daughter and I think my sister introduced me to Carol's Daughter because she used to use it on my niece and my niece has like beautiful hair. And I like fell in love with Carol's Daughter. I felt it worked very well on my hair. It was very cleansing. I always stuck with it. Although it was expensive, it was something that was new to me. I was still fresh to it. So it was just something I was using all the time. And then I started really getting into my natural hair and wanted to take better care of it so I would go on YouTube and I would look up other shampoos and conditioner that would work well with type 4 hair and I think at that time I was watching African Beauty if you guys are not familiar with her I'll post her on the screen um, she's somebody that I still watch till this day I love her so much I love her hair and I think she introduced Aussie Moist to me and then I got into using Aussie Moist and it worked very well for me it was very moisturizing it was cheap Aussie Morris is hella cheap I think a shampoo bottle is like what six dollars or maybe seven around that price so it's definitely a huge price difference from Carol's Daughter and all these other companies um and not to downplay them but their products are cheap but they work very well with my hair um very moisturizing and it's something that I still use till this day and something that I will always resort back to because that's where I started so yeah, like I literally, I never used any other products but Cow's Daughter and Aussie Moist. And then 
as I began my hair page and started YouTube, that's when I began to branch out to different companies because I really was not familiar with Miel or like Camille Rose or like TJN. Well, TJN was, I think, the third company that I started using because my hair gets dry really fast and I was looking for a good moisturizer and they have some bomb products. I love their line. But yeah, I literally never branched out to a handful of products. I just stuck with Cow's Daughter, Aussie Moist, and I think I was also doing like DIY stuff, like putting aloe vera in my hair, and I think I was doing protein treatments. And at the time, I was also doing rice water. I also tried rice water, of course. Like, who hasn't tried rice water? I know that was definitely a natural hair trend that was trending around the time when I started my natural hair journey. I think it's still trending, but I don't do it anymore. But that's another thing that I used to do. Now, the fifth thing that I avoided during my natural hair journey is wearing my hair fully out. Um, I, I don't know. I've never, not to say I've never been a fan of wearing my hair out, but I, I don't know. My hair was just so thick. It was just so big. And I love my hair and I'm not complaining, but having my hair in my face 24 seven was just not my cup of tea. Especially since my hair is oily and I have acne prone skin. Those two together are just like, no. You gotta choose one or the other. You have to keep your hair up, wash your face so your skin can do well, or you have to have your hair out and I don't know, like maintain your skin. But those two never really balanced out for me, which is why I would typically keep my hair in twist or maybe like mini braids, mini twists, or I keep my hair in a puff or in a bun because I just like to keep my hair out my face. I think it's just better that way. I don't, I'm trying to, you know, cleanse my skin and have it flourish and I can't do that if I have my hair on my face because my hair has a lot of oils and it has a lot of product and it just doesn't mix well in the same bowl. So definitely I've avoided keeping my hair out. Another thing is like, I don't, I really don't like people to touch my hair. Like I don't let anybody touch my hair. I don't care who you are, probably family, but it really depends. You have to be like my close, close family. That's pretty much it. But when it comes to other people touching my hair, I really try to prevent that because I don't know, like I really believe that people are envious of you and they will definitely, you know, I don't know, I'm scared that they will put something on my head and then the next day I'm bold. Like, I can't. I really cannot deal with that. So, um, definitely when it comes to avoiding things during my natural hair journey, wearing my hair out was just not one of them. And people say, oh my God, you look so good with your hair out. Or you look so different. And I'm like, yeah, I know. They're like, why don't you keep your hair out? And I'm like, because it's a lot of work. Like, if you have natural hair, you understand. It's a lot of work to keep your hair out. Um, but of course when it came to like special events, I would do like a braid out, maybe a twist out. Um, times when I want to look cute, I would keep my hair out and it would feel good. But majority of the time, my hair is either in a bun. Well, not even in a bun. I just started doing buns recently. I'm actually really surprised. Um, but my hair is either in a puff or it's in two twists. My favorite two twists that I do. I know when I was in high school, I used to keep my hair out sometimes, but... Around that time, I was kind of like experimenting, but it wasn't very, very often I would keep my hair out, so yeah. And now the last thing that I've definitely avoided during my natural hair journey, um, of course, is people touching my hair like I mentioned before. I just, I don't know, I grew up like that. My mom always told me, you know, don't let people touch your hair. And it just stuck with me, literally. Like, that's literally just it. My mom always used to tell me, don't let anybody touch your hair. And that's just that and I don't want people touching my hair anyway like why are you touching my hair you can ask me if it's really my hair and I will tell you it is my hair but you cannot touch my hair like nobody can touch my hair unless I you know allow you to touch my hair I don't want anybody wishing bad on me all right I grew my hair my hair is long and luscious and beautiful and I mm -mm, I can't afford for my hair to be falling out the next day because people put a voodoo on me <laughs> and when I keep my hair out people always stare at me like and I think they stare at me because they probably think like, this black girl has a lot of hair. And let's repeat that again. This black girl has a lot of hair. People tend to think that black girls can't have long hair. And that's a myth because we can. People need to get out of this thing where like black girls can't have long hair. All black girls wears wigs and lace fronts and braids. And yes, a lot of girls do wear that. But sometimes even under those wigs and braids, we do have long hair. So... And I think that's another thing why I never really wore wigs. 
It's because I really don't want people to think that I have no hair. Even though I shouldn't care what people think. That was another thing. Like, I don't want people to think that I have no hair under this wig or I have no hair when I wear braids because I do. But Hi guys, editing day here. I'm editing this video. And what I really meant to say in this part is like, I don't care what people think about me when I wear braids. And let's, just, let's say if I wore like a lace front and stuff like that. What I meant to say is that nowadays there's like this whole stereotype that if a black girl wears a wig or if they wear lace fronts and braids and faux locks and all these other cute hairstyles, they automatically don't have hair. And that's kind of what I meant to say. And I don't want people to judge me and think like, oh my God, you know, she has no hair or she's wearing this because she's bald headed underneath. That's kind of what I meant to say, not to say like I care about what people think about me because I don't, but definitely when it comes to this generation, everybody's always getting judged so quickly and nobody really knows the full story or why people do what they do. So yeah, that's basically what I meant to say. I really love my natural hair in general, which is why I always strayed away from wearing wigs and stuff like that. I love braids. I will get braids any day. But when it comes to wigs specifically, mm, you wouldn't really catch me with a wig unless it's a special event or unless I really don't want to deal with my natural hair and I want to do something different and I want to branch out, um, then I would wear a wig. But other than that, I would say the first time I got a lace front is when I turned 20. Yeah, when I turned 20, that's the first time I had my first lace front. I had my first wig when I was in high school for my high school prom. And then I think I had two wigs. Well, I had a closure, which is basically still a wig. I had a closure. I had an actual wig where I had my meek braids underneath. And that's when I had went on a cruise. Um, and then I had my lace front, which was when I turned 20 years old. So those are the six things that I've definitely avoided during my natural hair journey. Make sure you guys comment down below things that you have also avoided during your natural hair journey. Or maybe we're on the same page with the six things that I mentioned. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. Hit that post bell notification. And follow me on my main social media account at Here's Day. It is always on the screen. And the link is always in that the description box. And without further ado, I love you guys. Bye.